Welcome back to Around the Table with Stacey Smith as we take a look at the economy and investing. There was a story in the Wall Street Journal over the weekend that individual investors has now started to pull back on buying stocks in the last few weeks. A main reason that is cited is fear of recession. So, Michael, is this a good time to pull back from buying to wait to see if there is going to be a recession? Because some people on this panel believe we've already been in a recession. Hmm. Well, let me start by saying we are, I think, like everybody on the panel, we're investors. We're not traders. I, I do think over the long haul, stocks are a great investment, and we continue to believe that to be the case going forward. Um, but that being said, Stacey, it's, I'm sure everybody who's watching this is always focused on the next six months or so, and I totally get that. So um, you asked if there's going to be a recession or not. Um, debatable on whether we had one uh, in a, uh, recently, but I think there's a, a, a pretty high probability that a recession is likely to happen in 2023, uh, at the end of 2023 or 2024. Um, at one point in the beginning of this year, the yield curve, which measures the difference in yield between a 10-year U.S. government bond and a two-year uh, U.S. government bond, was the most negative it had been since 1980. And that's an inverted yield curve. And that typically signals um, an upcoming recession, if you look at that uh, historically. So um, that being said, if we do get a recession, I do think it's going to be one of the most telegraphed recessions in history. And thus, hopefully it won't surprise the markets all that much. But I do think that as an investor, you cannot deny the fact that financial conditions are tightening. Frank mentioned that the monetary supply is significantly slowing. Interest rates are no longer at zero. Cheap money has essentially been evaporated from the economy. And um, all that being said, we continue to remain invested in the markets, but we believe that you want to remain defensively positioned, whether that's holding low volatility stocks, low beta stocks, um, one of the investments we've been investing in for our clients recently is something called a, and it's a, a little bit controversial, I'm sure, for some of the panel members here, but it's called a buffered note. And a buffered note is an investment that is tied to a particular index like the S&P 500. But your outcome over the next year, Stacey, is more defined. So a buffered note gives you like a 10% buffer to the downside. So if the S&P 500 is down anywhere from 0 to 10% at the end of a one-year period, you don't lose anything outside of the management fees of that fund. Now, to pay for that protection, you are capped at how much money you can make over that next year. And those caps today are coming in at about 19%. And that means you participate one for one with the market up to 19%. But if the S&P 500 is above that, let's say it's at 30% over the one-year period, you leave some money on the table. Now, because we don't think equity market returns are going to be very strong over the next year, Having that buffer takes some of the guessing work out of trying to time the markets. But I want to stress one thing, and I, I, this is not something we recommend as a long-term investment for a number of reasons I won't get into, but we think it can make a lot of sense in a volatile environment where returns are unlikely to be significantly above the long-term averages. Okay. We only have about a minute or a minute and a half to go. So, uh, uh, Carrie, your thoughts quickly? Well, while I was I was looking at Kim Roller eyes when we were talking about recession or not. Um, you know, I think that as we go forward, we really just need to pay attention to the data and uh, see where this goes. I think today is a great example. You don't know what you're going to wake up to. And today we woke up to some news about OPEC. So trying to predict it is virtually impossible. It's really about, as Michael said, creating all weather portfolios and for our clients, making sure that their cash flow needs are met in the short term. Quickly, Kim. This time it's different. Companies can accurately understand what their demand is for their products or services and know what's in their um, warehouses because of uh, accounting systems. And I think we get through this time period without a big downdraft. And that's what I think. All right. That's what you think. All right, Frank, you do have 30 seconds and that's it. Go ahead. For additional reasons, I agree with Kim. With the infrastructure bill and the fact that we have full employment, I think it's going to be very difficult to have a downdraft of any consequence. All right. Thank you. Well, there is a lot more to discuss on how to manage your portfolio, and we'll do that in upcoming months. So I want to thank again, Terry and Kim and Michael and Frank for joining me. And we hope that you join us again for the next edition of Around the Table with Stacey Smith.